after mating has occurred, there are a number of post-zygotic isolating mechanisms which might lead to the isolation of populations simply because their offspring do not thrive or may not even be born. While we simply do not know if this was ever a factor in this isolation of separate hominid groups, it is likely that at some point it was, given the genetic differences between humans and chimps. So for example, there are two smaller ape chromosomes, which at some point fused to form human chromosome 2. So at some point in the hominid lineage, some members had 46 chromosomes, which would have made it more difficult to reproduce and produce viable offspring with other groups which had 48 chromosomes. In addition, there are other chromosomal differences, such as inversions of specific chromosomal regions, which would have increased the miscarriages um, which would have occurred when reproducing with individuals without these inversions. There are mobile genetic elements, such as transposons, uh, which have moved throughout the genome since the separation of the human and uh, chimp lineages. These would have made it more likely that the offspring between groups would have failed to thrive. And so a number of post-zygotic mechanisms might have meant that embryos conceived through interbreeding between groups simply failed to thrive and never were carried to term, or more frequently resulted in miscarriage, or if born alive, might not have been as healthy, or might have been sterile. And so these post-zygotic mechanisms may have played a role in separating ancestral hominid groups into distinct species.